Yeah, that's right. Myself and Richard run the party zone shows. So, how many years have you been organising? Well, the very first party line was 1986, wow. so that's 33 years now. Yeah, that's good. It's changed a lot? Yeah, when we first started it was very small. Yeah. So, originally there was uh, like a regionals yeah. for the national championships, and we just organised the East Midlands regionals, and then the, the, the show has grown from there. Okay. So we no longer have any competition games, we no. haven't had for many, many years, but uh, we focus more on good-looking games, as yep. you've probably seen as you've wandered around. So amazing games here. Yeah, they're, really they're amazing. good, and we're, we're lucky that something about this show means that people always put out their best games for us. Definitely. I mean, I, I went uh, to Salute earlier in the year, and I think that's shadowed out the best games for that. Yeah, I mean, I, my personal philosophy of war game shows is that you need some kind of niche. Yep. You need to have something that's different. Yep. And for Partizan, it's always been the best looking games. Yeah. Salute obviously is a really big shopping fest. Yeah. You know, yeah. They have much more space, yeah. many more traders. But I think we do tend to get the best, best looking games. And that's probably because in the early days, Duncan McFarlane from War Games Illustrated yeah. Yeah. then used to take lots of photos and they ended up in the magazine. Yes. Yeah. So he ended up in a kind of an arms race. So people would like, yeah, yeah it, it became prestigious. People put on their best face, their best games, their best figures, because they thought they'd probably be in the magazine. And, they, and in the early days they were. Nowadays we've got Henry Hyde coming with his Patreon yeah. channel. Um, Dan from WI yeah. still does stuff, and so you'll get pictures in there. And Guy from War Game Soldiers and Strategy also takes lots of photos. So still a good chance that if you've got on a game at Partizan, yeah. you'll end up in a magazine. So I think that really helps with people going, Okay, this has got to be at a really high standard. Yeah, Why two party games? Well, there have been three in the past. Yeah, I know. Why two now? Why two? There was just a demand for it. So we kind of spread out. Originally, we had we've always done the May show. That's kind of from the beginning. We ended up doing the we couldn't think of a better name for it. So the one, the second one is the other partisan. Yeah. And then originally we did what we called Fantasy Partisan, which yeah. was designed to be different. Yeah. Concentrate on sci-fi and fantasy. But three was just too much for anyone, yeah. really. Um, so eventually we dropped out of that, and the people that now run Hammerhead took it over, or took That's over the slot. Much, yeah, Hammerhead also uses this venue now, but it's a very different show. They yes. focus on participation games, and they, they run it very differently. That's fine, they've developed it from what was the original Cogs Chesterfield show. So. so what are the numbers in War Games, War Games coming to shows up or down? For us they've been going up. As when we finished at Callum Hall they were tending to tail off. Obviously there were problems with Callum Hall. Since we've been here, this is our third year now, numbers have been creeping up. So today we got over a thousand people through the door. First time we've had over a thousand so we're really pleased with that and thanks to everyone who's been. Yeah, I mean, one thing I've noticed as a war game, and I've been war gaming since like the very early 80s. Yep. And I've noticed since then that the internet has been a great thing, but it's also been a bit of a, a minus. Because there used to be many, many little shows. And yeah. That was where you'd go to see. Lots of local shows, yeah. yeah. And now people tend to do a lot of mail order, uh, yep. which is great. But um, what do you think the future of war game shows is nationally? I don't know. I think it takes a long time for a war game show to die. Yeah. Traders tend to support them as long as they can because obviously they want to make money. But I think if you talk to the trade and you have, then they'll tell you that trade is different. I think for us there's still the sort of physicality of actually seeing things in the flesh. And the light here is very good as well. So I think that's okay. Long term, whether the whole thing goes to 3D printing and stuff, who knows. Um, so do you think better to have a walk-in show of a certain size for survivability? I don't know, I think there's still a place for the smaller shows, but like I said, you've got to have a reason for doing it. Yeah. If you're the only show within 50 miles, 100 miles, then that's great. Yeah. Yeah, Nottingham, for example, has now a show called Robin, but for many years it didn't because we were effectively the show that covered the lead belt in Nottingham. So. And um, in regards to the future, any different plans for Partizan or stick in the same format? Same sort of format. We, we like the idea of having everything in one place. Yeah, I like that place. Yeah, it gives a better buzz. So, 
The problem is this hall won't get any bigger, so we need to think about it. The big change for us next year will be that the other partisan will slip back to an October slot. So it's still August this year, but next year we'll have a May and then an October slot, obviously filling the gap that's occurred at that time of the year. Okay, brilliant. And what do you look for in a competition game? And what do the people judging look for? Because there's many games there, all very fair. I thought the winner was incredible. Yeah, I mean, what you look for? well, it's interesting. I've when we we never used to do awards. Yeah. When we came up here, we thought, okay, we'll do some awards, but we'll make sure that Richard and I are not the ones judging. Yeah. So I think the editors look for particular things. For the participation games, they're yeah. looking for how many people are involved, you know, how much of a buzz there is around that game. Novelty is a big thing. Yeah. For the demo games, they're looking more for quality detail but also still talking to people we like our demonstration game as as well as participation games to be involving people so there's a whole factor of things yeah a whole variety of things and to be honest the ones that they pick are not always the ones that i would have picked so people see different things yeah yeah we don't we don't want to be accused of favoritism but it is interesting to see you know what they've spotted in other games that maybe i haven't well, one thing I noticed was your price, five pounds of honey. Yeah. I was, I was amazed when I got in with five pounds. I was like, that's good, you know, I paid the door. Yeah. Well, I was just, yeah. Well, man, if you've got a tenner, maybe it was a five. I thought it was supposed to be really good. How have you matched up the prices? Well, now you say that, obviously we'll put the prices up. <laughs> the, the difference with our show is we're not trying to make a profit. We okay. used to do it just to run the club. The Newark club has kind of disbanded. It's almost a virtual club yeah. now because Basically, everyone moved out of Newark, yeah. but we keep together to do the show. Okay. So we don't need to do anything much more than pay our costs, have a bit in the bank just in case something terrible happens, yeah. and the rest is invested in improving the show. Excellent. And if you could go to uh, another show yourself to look around for David, which one would you go to? I've never been to Salute. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to go. That's another one I'd love to go to just yeah. to see how they're doing things I'll differently. Go this year for the first time, so. Okay, well, I'll look out for your stuff and see what you think. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Thanks okay, thank you.